welcome to Golfing Idiots. So today we're going to flow and spine line a shaft. I'm going to show you the differences between the two and what those terms really mean. Now this is a shaft that we recently just put into a three wood on, the, uh, on this video right here that talks about how to replace uh, a golf shaft. So if you need to know how to replace the golf shaft, check this video out. But in this video, we're going to talk about flow and spine alignment. Now you can do this with some pretty simple tools that you may have around the house or for a few dollars that you can go spend at the store. It's not that much. But we'll talk about how to do that. So let's get started. Now that the shaft is ready, we're going to spine align. Now, do this with a simple tool. If you go to golfperfect.com, you can buy one of these kits. They've got um, several different kinds, or you could probably make it yourself. Uh, to go to Lowe's or Home Depot. Frankly, I was just too lazy to do that, purchased it through a Golf Perfect. But what it is, it's just simply uh, for this, uh, for this particular instrument, it's a ball bearing. Okay, you're gonna need one big enough to go over the end of the shaft, as far as the tip of the shaft. And then there's two ball bearings that allow for the butt end of the shaft so that it can, uh, the shaft can fit in and spin freely, okay? That's all there is to this, well, as far as the tools that you need. Now I'm going to show you how to spine align. So you're going to take your shaft, you're going to place it in the spine finder, and you're going to make sure that the tip end, butt end, sticks out approximately an inch past, uh, and past the end of the spine finder. Take your other ball bearing, and you're going to place it on the end of the shaft like so, and push down. Two fingers is enough uh, as far as to apply pressure. Now, one more thing, cut a piece of tape. Uh, about an inch long is just fine. That'll help you to mark the spine when you find it. And you also need a marker. So, we're gonna place, push down as far as apply pressure. And with your other fingers, you're going to spin the shaft slightly. Now, there's some theories out there that you just do this, you whip it, and wherever it lands is the spine. And true enough, you can get close, but the problem is, that's not truly the, the actual spine, the shaft, by doing it with that method right there. And the reason, if you will gently move the spine around, you're gonna feel a ridge, okay? It's right there is the high ridge. You can't have two in a shaft, so that's not uncommon. But one's gonna be stronger than the other as far as when you're applying pressure, you can feel this ridge. And so what I usually do is I don't even, I, I don't look at the shaft at first, I'll just uh, stare at uh, the wall or anything else and just really focus my uh, concentration on finding where the strongest ridge is in the shaft. Um, there, there's no question about feeling it. It feels like it, you know, it, it, it's a lump as far as when, when you spin it. So what I'll do is I will spin it a few times and find what I feel like is the strongest point uh, each time and then I will look at the shaft and I'll make a mark. So, you know, I, I'm getting somewhere, it's, it's gonna spin off, somewhere right in here is my mark where it feels like the strongest shaft. I'm gonna spin again, I'm gonna check it, see where it's at, spin, check again, see where it's at, and that's what we're coming up with, okay? It's the strongest point. Now when you're trying to locate the spine, there's a little bit of an art form, you just have to get, uh, the more you do it, the, the, more, the easier it will become as far as the feel. But you can feel with your senses how you're on one side of the spine to the other. One side to the other. And what you wanna do, and you may apply a little bit more pressure, that's fine as far as to locate it. You want to make sure that that top of the ridge, before it's, you feel the club or the shaft, give to the other side of the ridge or the other. That's what you're trying to set up for as far as getting it immediately getting it to the top of the bearing. And I think that's the point right there. I'm gonna lift up, remove the bearing. I'm gonna take my tape. I'm gonna mark the end of the shaft down here. I'm gonna keep it above where the ferrule would be so you don't have to remove the tape again later. And right on top of, of the tape, I'll, I'll mark just a nice black line. That's it. Now that gives me a, an idea of where the spine is in the shaft. So we've completed step one to flow a club. Okay, so I've located the spine on the shaft. You can see I've marked it. As I said, 
with, a, with a black line. Now, this is what's going to help us to flow the club. Now, this is where some confusion comes in. Um, you will find some people out there that will tell you once you, you put the spine, once you find the spine in the shaft, that this is the point that you line up at the 12 o'clock of the shaft with the golf head. So if you had, oh, uh, let's go with this, even though it's broke. If you had um, the head here, you would line it up directly at the 12 o'clock position. And this will allow for the best performance of the golf shaft. Okay, that's not true. All right. It could be in some instances, but it would be probably just by luck or fluke. There's one more step that you've got to do in order to get the best performance out of this shaft, and that's flow. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can flow a club. Um, doesn't have to be sophisticated. Now, uh, in this instance, I'm going to use a, a laser specifically designed for this from Golf Mechanics. Okay, uh, You can go to their website, purchase this. Um, it's, it's well worth the investment if you're going to uh, do a lot of, of flowing of clubs, okay? It makes it a lot easier as far as in, uh, finding the flat line oscillation for each shaft, okay? But another method that you can use, you can run out to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a 200-gram chuck, okay? Just simply this. And this will go on and off of a golf shaft. It'll secure just like so. Well, there it is, and then you can actually use that weight right there in order to find the flow. Um, you're just going to, when you twang the club, uh, pluck the club, whatever you want to refer to it as, uh, this will serve the same principle as far as in giving you that visual line or loop-de-loop -loop or whatever it may be in order to flow the club. We're going to do it today, obviously, with uh, the Golf Mechanics Laser. That's what I prefer. I have used this in the past. Um, and it does work fine to find the flow. So if you're just trying to save a few bucks, knock yourself out. Okay, so we've taken our spinal lined shaft, we've placed it in the vise. Um, approximately half inch to an inch beyond, be fine, okay? Um, not any, any more than that. And then down here, let me show you where we found the spine on the shaft. That is at the downrange or target position of the shaft. Okay, so we're setting this up for, we're trying to find this for a right-handed golfer, essentially. We're facing the target as far as the spine. Now, the only reason you do this is simply to speed up the process of finding the flow of the shaft, which we're gonna do next with our golf mechanics laser. Okay, so I've secured the laser on the tip end of the shaft. And all you do from this point is simply, uh, you can do up and down, okay? Uh, but I prefer uh, left to right. You'll still find the flow of the shaft regardless of which way that you do it. It's just a matter of knowing where to mark it in order to place it back in the uh, club properly. So when I was referring to twing or ping or whatever you want to call it, that's all you do. Simply put a little pressure on the shaft and go back. And I'll bring the video in closer so you can see, but obviously we have a little bit of a loop-de-loop -loop round around. The shaft is not flowed at this point in time. Okay, it's getting kind of a wild action. And what we're looking for is a straight left and right line. That will tell us that this club is flowed. So this will give you a better of actually seeing the laser and what it's doing and what the club looks like or what the shaft looks like when it's out of flow. Now remember, this is with the spine uh, toward, once you found it, toward the target position. I'm gonna show you now what it would look like if you just put the spine at the 12 o'clock position and what that flow would look like. Now, if we just took where we located the spine and placed it in the 12 o'clock position of the club, this is what we would have. And as you can see, it's around around, over the top and then under, over the top and then under. The circle's getting a little larger. Plainly see this. That is with the spine at the 12 o'clock position, which is obviously not what we're looking for. So now I'm gonna put the spine back into the targeting position and start to locate 
the spine. And I'll tell you how I do that, or excuse me, and start to locate the flow. And I'll tell you how I do that. Now, one thing I also want to show you while we're here is what the flow of this club would be with the shaft label, label up. That's how most clubs come when you buy them, shaft label up. Sometimes you can get them shaft label down. But at this particular uh, shaft would have been shaft level up off the shelf, which it would have been. This is the flow that you would have had from the club. And you're going to watch this get a little bit wider and wilder. Okay, that's going to give you an inconsistent delivery of the club head into the impact zone. I don't care what the pundits say out there. This is not witchcraft or magic when it comes to shafts. This has been studied for a long time. Tom Wishon has had, had a, a lot of things to say on the subject. And I'm a personal believer that there's a huge difference with a flowed shaft and a non-flowed shaft when it comes to delivery of the club head at, at impact. And it will make a difference in your golf game. So what you want to do is turn the club slightly in the vise each time, readjust the laser. If you're using the chuck method, you don't have to readjust that at all because it's completely round and, and not lopsided when it's weight. With the laser, readjust it to the, to the top of the shaft and then twang, twang the club again. What you're finally looking for is this pattern. That's a shaft that's been flowed. It's straight back and forth with the laser. You can see it plainly in the video. And that's what you're looking for. Not a round and round, not a loop-de-loop, -loop, but straight left to right, left to right. Once you've found that position, then you'll take that tape that you had marked the spine earlier, remove it, and you're gonna put that black line directly on top of the shaft which will be the 12 o'clock position for the shaft. So I've removed the shaft, uh, removed the laser. Uh, before I did that, obviously, I, I put the tape back at that 12 o'clock position where it was uh, in, the, in the flow, flat line oscillation. Okay. Now, from this point, the shaft is ready to be inserted into any club, um, obviously. You want to make sure, when I say insert the club to the 12 o'clock position, that is this black line now, that's the flow. You want it in that 12 o'clock position, okay? Uh, matter of fact, by USGA rules, um, you can't have it in any other position but that 12 o'clock position. What I mean by that is you're not allowed by the rules of golf to flow a shaft to accentuate a draw or a fade. You can do it, um, but just keep in mind that that will make that club illegal for tournament purposes for tournament play. As far as recreational play, do what you want. But I do, I do at least want to advise you of that. There are, there are standards out there. Now, a few things about flow in and of itself. Yes, there's a lot of skepticism on flowing the club out there, and you can search the internet and find a, a ton of negative on it. It says it doesn't prove anything, it doesn't assist anyone, it doesn't do anything, okay? And the flip side, you can also find a lot of information out there that says it does help. It does build uh, consistency to the delivery of the club head into the impact zone. That it can deliver uh, a tighter dispersion um, as far as in your, your uh, strike of the golf ball. It can deliver some uh, more distance in, in certain instances. All I can tell you is this, from my own standpoint, because every club in my bag has been flowed. I've never had one customer come back and say they didn't see benefits from a flowed golf club. And that's in your irons or the woods. It's either going to deliver just consistency or it's going to deliver consistency and distance. A couple theories for that. Again, when a club's going straight flat, flat line oscillation back and forth, and you know that, that that's the way that club, when that club loads and bends and comes into impact, if it is out of flow, it could come in in a number of ways. You saw how the, the different type of oscillation patterns as far as when it was not flowed. And you know it's just slight millimeters, slight, it's, it's such a small gap when it comes to consistency and non-consistency in golf and the strike and where the ball impacts that club face. That if a club is not flowed, and you come into impact, you can go, man, that was a great swing. It felt like solid contact. What happened? 
I, I think it has a lot to do with the flow of a golf shaft. So um, I have seen tremendous benefit when it comes to distance and consistency on a float club. So if you want to test out flowing, I would tell you to start with your driver. Uh, that usually shows the biggest impact in your game immediately with a float shaft. Try it out, see what you think. I promise you'll enjoy the results of a flowed iron or wood in your bag more than you can possibly imagine. Hey, thanks for watching. If you've got any other suggestions on videos you'd like to see us do, hey, drop a comment down below and let us know what you need help with. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.